Hello and welcome to the video. I want to talk to you about Cubase 12 and it's not going to be one of those videos where you know I explain all the new features and functions and show you how blown away I am in a thumbnail. I want to talk to you about the stuff that hasn't been updated and hopefully we can see changes made to in the not too distant future. So first of all let me get one of the main ones out of the way which I was really disappointed it didn't make it into this version and that is the localized undo feature from version, I think it was 10, if I remember right. Now, localized undo allowed you to basically undo changes at a local level, depending on what you had selected. The, currently, the undo history in Cubase, how it works, is a little bit annoying. So let's just quickly record some drums and some bass in, and I'll demonstrate to you what localized undo was and how it can't how the undo just works basically now so let's uh record some bass all right some basic bass okay let's get some drums down That'll do. Right, so what is this localized undo business? If we suddenly decided to go, okay, I want to get rid of these notes here and, and add a snare randomly there, and then if I want to start editing the bass, maybe get rid of this note, make this note longer. If I press Control and Z now, it would undo my last change and then carry on undoing the changes that were made prior to that. So this is just like a typical undo function. With localized undo, if I wanted to do changes just to the drums, I could select the event for the drums, open them up, hit Control and Z, and it would undo the last thing that I did to the drums track, which was really useful. This I don't know why they removed it in version 11 and why it hasn't made its way back into version 12. And another thing about localized undo that... I would also like to see expanded on is if we switch over to the mixer, if you have a plugin that does not have an undo function in it, for example, Steinberg stock compressor, let's say you're mixing the track and you've changed some of the settings and then you go on to the other audio channels and you change all the settings on all the plugins and add, add new things in. Um, if you just want to come back and suddenly go, okay, I don't like the change I made to the compressor, you would look at the history, go through it, and click on where you last made a change to the compressor, but then it would undo everything that you did after the fact with when you're mixed into all the other stuff. So it would also be cool to have localized undo allow you to undo settings in plugins, VST instruments, everything. It would be so, so useful, and it, it really baffles me why they took out the original localized undo to start with. Please, Steinberg, put this back in. Now, going back over to the main project window, the second thing I want to point out is that the expression map editor has not been touched at all. It's still the same expression map editor, very cumbersome to work with, and it's very limited in what it lets you do. Ideally, it needs, obviously, like I mentioned in my previous video, it needs completely overhauling, and I think this is high on Steinberg's list. But while you're at it, Steinberg, please allow us to offset the delay for each articulation change. So you can offset the patches that you switch between so they sync up better in the project. At the moment, the way you would go about offsetting things, it, this is more so for people that work with orchestral libraries. So when you're recording and playing in orchestral libraries, you have to use this function in Cubase up here which is called time delay. And it basically shifts the, the, the starting point of the instrument, it offsets it. You can either make it later or you can make it come in sooner. And this is so you can sync it up with the grid and with the tempo. If you just try and you know record MIDI in and it's not live and you're programming it in and it's snapping to the grid, 
you'll find that when you play back, it might be slightly behind. So you have to then either offset the MIDI so it starts slightly before the bar to compensate for it. Now, if you could do this with an expression map, this would be beautiful. Now, moving on, um, another thing that hasn't been updated is track presets. I mentioned this in the previous video. Um, it would be nice when you're saving a track preset, for example, let's say we've got these in a folder and let's say we've routed these to a group and we've got like plugins on there and we've also maybe added uh, an effect send uh, to these like so and then we select all this stuff and save it as a track preset. Well, A, at the moment you can't if you've got stuff inside a folder track, so let's exclude the folder and just save these. If you if you save these as a track preset uh, and then go to the right zone and then navigate to where the track presets are stored, so user presets, whoops, went a bit mad there with the clicking. So user presets, track presets, and because we save more than one channel, it's a multi. If it's a single channel, it's just BSD instrument. If we go to multi, and then I try and find that thing I just saved. I can't I, with the really. Sh I should have named it something that wasn't stupid, really. And then we drag and drop this in to the project. It's still not recalling the routing settings between the groups and the effect sends. And if I switch back over to the mixer here, you'll see. Um, if we go to routing, it's just going to stereo output. It's not actually re recalling. Uh, the routing for when we save the preset. This is still a thing and it still bothers me that this has not been looked at. It would be great if it can retain the routing and any plugins, any effects ends, and also allow you to save a track preset with folders as well so things are nested into them. Please, please, please look at this. Even if it's not until version 13 or 12.5, it would be so good to see this inside the in, in Cubase because Studio One allows you to do this kind of stuff. Um, I think Logic, actually I'm not too sure about Logic, so I won't say Logic, but Studio One allows you to work with modular template building much better than it does with Cubase. And it would be nice if, you know, you could do that. So while we're on the subject of Studio One, one of the things I like about Studio One is that when you're working with an instrument editor like this, and then you select another track, it will automatically switch to the instrument that's loaded onto that track and keep it all in one window. So for example, it would bring up Easy Bass here and have it in the same window. With Cubase, you can have multiple windows, but sometimes I don't want to work like that. It does frustrate me sometimes in Studio One that you can't sort of like have the best of both worlds. So you can have uh, everything in one window, or you, if you want to, you can have multiple things, whoops, on show if you need to. I think, Steinberg should add in a little button up here that allows you to have everything nested into one window as you're changing through tracks. And then if you disable it, it allows you to have multiple things showing up. This would be really cool. And also apply to the expression map editor as well. So when you're working on the track, it'd be good if you could select it and uh, have the expression map automatically change on here so you can edit it and then go through the other ones and edit it instead of having to go through a, a massive list and select it and then edit it and save it. That's something else that would be great to see. Something else that hasn't made its way back into Cubase since version nine is having the ability to colorize multiple selected channels in the mixer. You still can't do it. So if we switch over to the mixer here, in Cubase 9, you could select these. I think it was you held alternate and shift, or it was control shift. It was, it was one of the short keys. And uh, you could colorize all the tracks that were selected. Now, in 12, you still can't do this. And it's, it's a little bit annoying, actually, because sometimes it's actually nice to be able to just do things from the mixer and not have to come back to your main project window to go, OK, I need to change the color of these. Um, so I don't know, let's apply this color and then, then you'd find that it's changed in the mixer. That would be nice to see. Also something else I would like to see is still have the ability to, you know, move channels around in the mixer. You can do this on other DAWs. Um, it's, it's only a minor thing. It doesn't really, it's not really something that comes to the forefront of my mind all the time. Um, but again, it would still be very nice to have that inside of Cubase 12. I'm gonna leave it there. Um, let me know in the comments below what you would have liked to see updated in Cubase 12 and let me know if you think it was worth the update.